One thing that bugs me, maybe more than any other apologetic tactic, are theists who hold scientific degrees and try to capitalize on them while entirely ignoring everything that science actually has to say about the subject. Just because you've earned a degree, that doesn't make you magical. It just means you've been trained in a particular field to a certain degree of expertise. If you ignore that training, though, if you talk about things for which there is no evidence, you're no better than anyone else out there. So here we go with somebody who makes a big deal about his expertise, then proceeds to ignore all of it and spout a bunch of religious nonsense. Anybody surprised? My name is Gerald Schroeder. I have, I have a, thank God, a strong science background from MIT, Massachusetts Institute of Technology, bachelor's, master's, PhD, seven years in the physics staff, seen a whole range of atomic bombs detonated, moved to Israel, met my wife, Barbara Sofer, a great writer, and uh, then uh, teach Torah and science. So luckily, I'm, I'm, I'm lucky that I have the two that come together. I'm glad to know your background, but none of that actually matters in the long run because having the degrees and having the experience, those things don't mean a thing if the work that you do doesn't follow the scientific method. There are plenty of religious people who also have a science background, yet when it comes to their religion, they just ignore all of it. They don't apply skepticism and critical thinking to their religious beliefs. They don't question the conclusions that their religious beliefs force onto them. They just believe blindly and reject anyone who poses those difficult questions that they just have no answers to. I'm going to make an early prediction here and say that's what we're all in for. And one of the questions is a, that I'm asked as a scientist is how can a scientist really believe that there's something what we refer to usually as God. You know, is this metaphysical whatever acting in the world or producing the world? And the irony is the question's really a non-starter. Science has, in fact, discovered God. And you can talk to the hardline atheists and they will say, it looks like science has indeed discovered God. Which hardline atheist scientists have actually said that? Produce citations, name names. I don't believe you. Besides, you actually haven't told us what you mean by God. There are lots of possible descriptions from the most fundamentalist Christian or Jewish to the most vague deist. At least explain to us what you mean by your terminology. Then produce your sources and provide links to where these things were actually said in context. I suspect that none of these things are going to happen, though. And how would that be? Well, if you take the trouble of going to the web and, and they're typing WMAP, the initials for, for a satellite... It's a diagram that shows the development of the universe from the creation over time. It's a timeline. Every word on that diagram comes from the NASA site. It is the condensed knowledge of the scientific community of how the universe created and how it got to where we are today. Each of the lines, the vertical lines, is another billion years. Okay, you start from a burst of energy at the extreme left side of the diagram, and you end up at the far end with the oval. The oval sh is to indicate expansion in all directions. Of course, because it's a timeline, we can't show that on, on a single piece of paper. We see here, most amazingly, that on the extreme left edge, it shows a beginning to the universe. Oh, brother. That's what I was afraid of. He's just taking the beginning of the universe and arbitrarily applying the label God to it and pretending that science has discovered God. Hey, I can play that game too. Maybe I'll label it Bigfoot and prove that science has proven Bigfoot is real. This is, unfortunately, an old apologetic where the true believer picks a real event that vaguely matches their made-up description for their God, then declares that that proves their God is real. Nothing could be further from the truth. This is just the timeline of the Big Bang and the expansion of the universe. There's no evidence of any God in here whatsoever. Now go back less than 50 years. If I were teaching that at Tech, I might have, you, you know, a person could lose tenure saying that there was a creation of the universe. It sounds like it's Bible. Because less than 50 years ago, the overwhelming scientific opinion was the universe is eternal. Because you're just asserting that there was a creation to the universe. Yes, steady state was eventually disproven. But if you were actually a scientist using the scientific method, you would know that's how science actually works. It discards untenable ideas as new evidence becomes available. Once we found cosmic background radiation and realized what it meant, we had to change our model. 
Welcome to science, which you should already know, but apparently you don't. There was never a beginning. The Bible is wrong from the very first sentence. And then we discovered, suddenly, Arno Penzies and Robert Wilson, the Bell Labs in New Jersey, the northeast of the U.S., discovered the echo of the Big Bang, the energy left over, which George Gamow, 60 years ago, predicted that if there had been a universe created hot and small, it would have exploded, and the energy would get more and more dilute. And, the, and Penzias and Wilson, these Arno Penzias and Robert Wilson, discover this energy that had been predicted overnight. The Bible got it right. There was a beginning to the universe. But that's not what the Bible predicts. The Bible says there's an all-powerful, intelligent agent that created the entire universe in six days, none of which is remotely accurate. So, as most desperate apologists do, he's just going to pick and choose which parts of the Genesis creation myth he's going to talk about and which part he's going to ignore and hope nobody calls him on it. This isn't a problem for just the Christians or the Muslims or the Jews, all of them who pull this ridiculous, laughable nonsense. It's true of all religions who desperately try to shoehorn their silly beliefs into a scientific context, trying to make them seem a little less ridiculous. And newsflash for you people, it doesn't work. Now the black in the diagram is nothing. It's not a vacuum. Vacuums are within that diagram, within that cone of expansion. Vac vacuums are empty space, and space is something. The black of the paper around the diagram is nothing. It doesn't fit in our human brain because humans think in a box, a box made of time, space, and matter slash energy. And religious delusion. Let's not forget religious delusion. Sorry, I have no real problem imagining absolute nothing. The absence of everything, including space-time. I'm not sure why this is such a conceptual problem for some people. How are we going to have this idea, is there a God or not? Notice that the creation force isn't a three-letter word, G-O-D. If you look at the words carefully, it's a quantum fluctuations. That understanding was first brought down by Ed Tryon, brilliant human being, in the journal Nature, almost 40, 50 year, 40 years ago. The universe allows creation of something from nothing, provided you have the laws of nature, the quantum fluctuation. Tryon realized, and he published in the journal Nature, one of the two leading peer-reviewed journals in the world, that you can create something from absolute nothing, provided you've got the laws of nature, quantum physics and the laws of relativity, in other words, the laws of nature. So look what science has discovered. We can create the universe from absolute nothing, provided we have the, the, the forces of nature. Now, the laws of nature, the forces of nature aren't physical. They act on the physical. So if they create the universe, that means they predate the universe. So now we have a set of forces, we call them the laws of nature, that are not physical, that are able to act on the physical, they create the physical from absolute nothing. And they predate the universe, which means they predate our understanding of time. Put that together, it sounds very familiar. If you haven't noticed it, that's the biblical definition of God. No, no there isn't. The Bible portrays God as an intelligent agent all-knowing, all-good, and all-powerful. You can't get from the Big Bang to the biblical God without some truly amazing leaps of irrationality. To start off, while we can't really see any further back than Planck time, our best thinking on the matter is that the laws of the universe didn't significantly predate the universe itself. They were generated during the Big Bang and started acting on the earliest quantum particles immediately thereafter. All our scientist friend here is doing is saying that he's going to arbitrarily worship the quantum fluctuations, and he's going to call it God, and then he's going to arbitrarily apply a bunch of unjustified and undemonstrated characteristics based solely on blind faith because it makes him feel good. And then he wants to pretend to be rational? He stopped doing that back before step number one. There's only one nuance that's left, left, left. Left hanging, we can talk about it another time perhaps, is that which created the universe, those forces active in the universe. But up to that point, science says, we, you are correct, the, the definition of the biblical God is predates time, outside of time. God is not a physical being, is, is a force, and it creates the universe. You'll notice that the opening chapter of Genesis, the only name for God is Elohim, God as manifest in the universe. Science has indeed discovered the biblical God. Well, we just need one part left, crucial, 
that which created the universe is also active in the universe itself. The very fact that you're watching this now pretty much establishes that point. Yeah, not so much. You've taken an entirely natural phenomenon, attached the word God to it, stuffed a bunch of unsupported characteristics into it, and are now pretending that your ridiculous religion is somehow justified because you played some word games. If that makes you proud of yourself, I don't know what to tell you. Certainly it isn't specific in any way, shape, or form, but as I said, it isn't just the Jews or the Christians who do this. I did a video a while back where a Muslim claimed that the moon was split in two just because the Quran says it was. He and our pseudoscientist friend here have something in common. They're doing science completely ass backwards. Instead of taking the observations first and following them to their logical conclusions, whatever they might be, they're picking and choosing which parts of the religious books they want to prove and only looking for things that can be shoehorned into a bizarre explanation that they were right all along. That's not science, and anyone who pretends that it is has no basis for calling themselves a scientist. Scientists are not defined by how many letters they have after their names. They're scientists because they follow the scientific method, and this guy, he isn't even close. This is one of the most obvious places where religious apologetics fail, where they make claims about things they clearly have no clue about and pretend that their supposed authority, logical fallacy that it is, lends them some sort of credibility. It didn't work back in the 80s when people like Dwayne Gish and Henry Morris were touting their scientific degrees and saying things that entirely disagreed with everything science and objective evidence had to say, and it doesn't work today. Unfortunately, these people never learn their lessons. They don't care. Faith is all, and that's all pointless and stupid. Thanks for hanging out with me for another romp through absurd apologetics. If you have any more that you want me to take on, send it here, or leave it in the comments below. You can also follow me on Twitter at atbitspot1, and please retweet my videos. Otherwise, you know the drill. I'll be back soon with more religious stupidity and political absurdity. It's just what I do.